There have been some really big changes to M1 Finance over the past year, with the investment platform, checking and savings accounts, and the M1 Plus feature. In this video, I'm going to go over everything that's changed, and why I think it means M1 Finance has fundamentally changed, and whether or not I think you should use M1 Finance in 2024. As always, this video is not sponsored by M1 Finance. These are my unbiased thoughts as a longtime user. Because I've been investing my money at and recommending M1 Finance to just about everyone I know for several years now. And as a user of M1, I'm happy because I'm happy with the functionality of the platform. How M1's high system of grouping your investments together lets me take a completely hands-off approach to managing my portfolio. I know that with every new dollar I add to my M1 Invest portfolio, M1 will take that money and invest it in such a way that keeps my investments allocated just the way I set them, without me having to worry about going in and ever rebalancing my portfolio manually. I even made M1 earn their high-yield savings account, my main savings account. It's currently paying 5% interest and that interest gets posted to my account at the end of every month like clockwork. And transferring money between my different accounts at M1 and into and out of my checking account with a completely separate bank from my M1 high yield savings account has been completely seamless. And honestly, any changes I'm going to talk about in the rest of this video don't change that fact at all. But that doesn't mean they may not change it for you if you're a current or even a prospective M1 customer. So now let's get dirty. There have been a lot of changes with M1 over the past year since I made my last video on them. And I'm going to be straight with you. They're not all good, but the first change I want to talk about is a good one. And that was M1 directly addressing a complaint that a lot of users had about the platform. And that complaint that a lot of people had in the past about M1 was that they used payment for order flow in order to execute their trades. Meaning all the trades the customers placed on M1, M1 then went and sold all that trading volume to a third party to actually execute the trades for them. And in the past, that third party was Apex Holdings. Now the reality of all this is, Unless you're a really active day trader, it's pretty insignificant and irrelevant. But it did gain a lot of notoriety back in the Robinhood scandal a few years back. And out of all that Robinhood drama, any brokers using pain for order flow, it became kind of a black mark against them. So M1 took a major step. And as of mid-2023, they brought all of their trade execution and clearing in-house. Meaning no more payment for order flow on M1 Finance. Another thing that's changed over the past year or two with M1 Finance is that they've expanded their product offerings quite aggressively. I mean, when I first joined M1, all they had was the investment platform. Since then, they added checking accounts with a debit card, high yield savings account I already mentioned, a cashback rewards credit card, cryptocurrency accounts, and the ability to create smart transfers to transfer money between all of your M1 accounts based on a set of rules that you define. As you can imagine, any company that expands that much over a relatively short period of time is gonna experience some growing pains. So now let's get into it and talk about some of the changes that have happened over M1 recently that have left customers upset, confused, and the major change that M1 just made that redefines what they are as a company. First though is a feature that came and then went. Over the summer, M1 sent out a notice to all its checking account and debit card customers that they would stop paying interest into the M1 checking accounts by July 1st of 2023 and would be closing the checking account product by Halloween. They recommended that customers take the money they had in the checking accounts and move over into the high yield savings account instead. M1 claimed that the reason for all this was because of the suspension of savings account withdrawal limits back in 2020. That there were just fewer differences between checking accounts and savings accounts anymore. But obviously, if you were using your M1 checking account as your main checking account, this was a huge pain in the ass. Not only do you have to move all your money into a different account, but then you have to update all the automatic transfers and payments you may have set up. M1 also said that they would be adding many checking-like features to the high-yield savings account by the time they closed down the checking accounts in October of 2023. So, as we sit here talking about this in early 2024, how does that all look? Not good. As I already mentioned, I'm a user of the M1 high-yield savings account and have been since day one when the product opened and I have seen no checking like features, whatever that's supposed to mean, added to the account at any point. As a high yield savings account, it's great, I have no complaints, but if I was one of the many checking account customers that were told to move my money over into this account and were expecting to use it as I was using the checking account, I'd be pissed. Because not only have they not added any of those checking like features to the account in order to satisfy those customers, they 
closed down new account openings to the high yield savings account just a few months after they opened the product to begin with. And I am not sure why M1 Finance did this. I mean, it's not like they just sat around in the boardroom and said, hey, let's offer a checking account and a savings account and, you know, press the button to make it happen. They went out and bought a bank in order to provide these services to their customers. And then they closed down the checking accounts altogether and paused new signups at the savings accounts for reasons. I even emailed a rep with M1 asking when high yield savings accounts were going to reopen to new accounts. And I got told it'll be reopening soon, but didn't get any sort of timeline on what soon actually means. And it's a shame because I think the high yield savings account works great. And it is a really great product to add on if you're already using M1 Invest. So I'm hoping that when they do reopen the high yield savings account to new customers, it will be with those additional features they promised the checking account customers last year. But only time to tell. Now for the most recent change. The one M1 just made and I think represents a seismic shift in what M1 Finance stands for and who should use it in the first place. What many of you don't know is I already made this video and I was halfway through editing that video, getting it ready to post when M1 dropped a bombshell on us all and caused me to have to start completely over and make the video you're watching now. And that big change not only has to do with M1 Plus, but the core of the M1 investment product itself. When I first signed up for M1 a few years back, M1 Plus cost $125 per year. And all it really got you was access to their second afternoon trading window. As recently as last year, the price was the same, but they did a lot to add the value you were getting for your money. And the original plan for M1 Plus in 2024 was to keep all those same product offerings I just mentioned, but to slash the price of M1 Plus down to $36 per year, or just $3 per month. But now the announcement M1 just made is that starting in May of 2024, all of that is gonna change. Because starting in May, all of those M1 Plus features I just mentioned will be free. And not only that, once this change goes into effect, M1 will refund you for whatever remaining months of M1 Plus you had already paid for. It's great, right? Well, not entirely, because there's a catch and a lot of current and potential customers aren't gonna be happy about it. The catch is, all those products and services are free if you have at least $10,000 with M1. Now that $10,000 doesn't have to be all in the same account. If you have $3,000 in your high yield savings account and $7,000 in your Roth IRA, you have $10,000 combined with M1. Whatever way you get $10,000 combined, it counts. And if you don't have at least $10,000 with M1, you're not gonna be happy because they're gonna start charging a $3 a month platform fee just to have your account on the platform with under 10 grand in it. One of the main selling points of M1 and one of the reasons I've always recommended it so highly is because the main investing product is really perfect for a passive investment strategy built around dollar cost averaging. You're the kind of person that wants to slowly build your portfolio over time through consistent deposits of new money. M1 was purpose built and perfect for that. And they did for free, but now they've changed that. And it's making me really think about who M1 Finance is best for and whether or not I should still recommend it to you. I think one of the reasons M1 is doing all this is because A, it's probably pretty expensive to hold and maintain all of these small accounts that have under $10,000 in them. And B, the $3 a month fee they're gonna start charging people with less than $10,000 in their accounts is still less than just about all of the comparable services that M1 probably considers direct competitors to their products. Things like Acorns or Wealthfront or M1's new Fidfolio product. I think all of those products, which are M1 competitors, are around $5 a month. So M1 is probably thinking, we're still cheaper than all of our competitors, and we have all these other products combined, not just the automated investing portion of it. So would I still recommend M1 Finance to you in 2024? I think if you're a current or a prospective user that has more than $10,000, you're going to invest there? Absolutely, 100%. If you don't immediately have $10,000 you're going to put in there, but you think you can get to that level in the relatively short term, then yes, I still think using M1 is a great idea. But if you're someone who's going to start off with a very small amount and slowly build over time, 
Say you're going to deposit $100 and you only have $50 or $100 a month to add to that. That's where the value proposition gets a little tricky. Because yes, some of the automation features and the pies and all that of M1 are great features, which I do think will help you out. And if that's what's really drawing you to M1 in the first place, then yeah, it is still cheaper than other companies that have those similar features. But on the other hand, there are also plenty of places where you can invest small amounts of money completely for free. That's really up to you to decide, is $3 a month worth it for these automation features that M1 has? Or am I better off going to a Fidelity or a Schwab or even a Robinhood? Whether or not you decide to invest at M1 Finance or somewhere else is up to you. But I think you should check out this video next on the six best index funds that you can use to build your portfolio around. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoy that one and I'll see you next time.